Hello, and welcome once again to another Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I am doing over this rather sorry looking, it's a Matchbox K14, which means king sized, and it's the Taylor Jumbo Crane. And this particular type here, all yellow, was manufactured between 1964 and 1966. In 1967 to 1970, they came out with a red counterweight box on the rear of the crane. It's a 158 scale model and I'm going to get straight into it. So this is a major problem with this particular model and I can't understand why nobody threw it away. This crane piece here on the top of the body of the crane is broken. This, I don't know what you call that, the hook strap is bent. A lot of paint chips over it. So there's a wheel and axle missing on the front here. Actually, there's two wheels and one axle missing. But I do have a spare vehicle, which I'm going to rob some wheels off of. And I'll order some more because this one's missing the rear wheels. So pretty much one or the other I had to do, so I chose the hardest. Windscreen's a little bit scuffed up. The sticker needs replacing on the front here. I'm going to have to polish that windscreen up. Just all over sort of used look. So I'm going to drill this rivet out to begin with. Separate this body, strip it down, undercoat it and paint it as per normal. So using a suitably sized drill and there is no hard and fast size for these models. The size of the rivet head does vary. I pry the base off trying not to break anything oh well that disappeared quite quickly and there we go i caught it let's take that uh windscreen out have a look at that it's a huge windscreen probably one of the biggest ones i've seen i'm going to enjoy polishing that up there's a ram on the top there uh funnily enough i didn't realize until now this model's in multiple pieces there's a cabin and a, and a rear section like that and they slide together which is something I've never seen on any other model I've done so that's quite interesting here's all the main parts here I'm going to first up of course strip the paint off but having a look at these parts here, there's a few plastic parts on here so I'm gonna to have to remove these rivets and take the plastic parts off. These wheels I might get away with leaving them on there if I can mask them off. Might save me a little bit of uh, extra work. Something I don't usually do. Have done it in the past. Thought this one might be a good candidate for it. If I can just strip the paint off, undercoat it and repaint it and then reveal the wheels again. Means I won't have had to have taken them off. This lower portion of the ram for the main boom is held in with a tiny little rivet or tiny little axle if you will and I've had to ground the end down almost to the model itself you can see it's just about the right size of the hole that it's gone through and to poke it through I'm using this spring-loaded center punch like that just to sort of knock it through and free it up so I can pull it out it didn't work the first time around Second time it did. So now I'll get some long nose pliers onto that end and wiggle it out of position. There we go. And that lower part of the ram fell out. I'll look at that later and see what it needs doing. I do hate these white plastic straps they have on these trucks and cranes. They're always bent like that and they look horrible. Why did they didn't put a little bit of chain on there? I don't know. Would look so much better anyway that's got to come off so i'm using this dremel grinding this dremel cutting wheel just to try and grind the end away and then pull this out with the same long nose pliers as i used before i might be able to reuse that not sure could be touch and go time will tell i'll pull this out and see how that's bent I'm gonna to have to straighten that and I risk breaking it and I hate breaking stuff. Here's the second part of the ram. 
The first part was plastic, this part's metal. And again, a very fiddly job to take that tiny little pin out. And I'm already regretting starting this model because I think it's going to be a nightmare to put back together. There's another pin here too at the back, look. Holding the counterweight on, that's got to come out as well. Now I need to separate this top piece so I can repair the counterweight assembly. So I'm just prizing it out, it comes out not too difficult there. And I think there's enough, enough resistance for me just to push that back together again when the time comes. So this is where this is broken, snapped off completely, obviously a weak point on the model. But before I can fix it up, I'm going to have to paint strip all this paint off to reveal the bare metal beneath. And then I can start repairing it. This part here I'm going to have to do separately. Bit awkward those little hemostats there the locking forceps don't want to close uh, those ones are slightly different must have a slightly different angle on the handles they work so luckily I've got multiples of these and I found a set that worked so tip the I love the word gelatinous I keep using it I shouldn't use it all the time gets a bit boring if you overuse it but I use this gelatinous paint fluid <laughs> paint removing fluid spread it on with a brush let it do its thing wash it off in a sink of warm water flowing water and scrub it with some denture brushes or toothbrushes whatever it needs to get this paint off Fairly standard start to a restoration. Or maybe this should be called a makeover. So once that paint strip has started to work, it's into the ensuite bathroom. And give it a scrub and a little bit of agitation. And this is what they turn out like. Back to the bare metal almost a hundred percent which was good for me today sometimes the paint puts up some resistance this paint didn't seem to be too difficult oh there's a little bit there and there I use a dental tool just to scrape away at that it's not worth going through the whole rigmarole of paint stripping it again just for those little bits oh and there's a little tiny chip on the corner there okay now remember I was going to leave those on while well, the paint stripper made all the masking tape come off so I've had to put some new new masking tape on and this was bent it was slightly bent and I tried to straighten it and foolishly didn't apply any heat and it just snapped in the bat of an eyelid and now I've got myself extra work which I'm not happy about because I've got to repair the the boom in the counterweight where it's broken and now I'm going to repair this part as well. So I'm using this Muggy Weld which is a, a fantastic product and it's, look it up online. If you haven't got any I suggest you get some. It's a very light alloy and you use it in conjunction with this flux. And I found that one of these little blow torches works marvellously available from a cooking shop so I always set myself up try and brace the pieces together where I want them to be now the key to this product is it will only flow where the flux is and the flux is also essential in giving you advanced warning of when the metal is heated up enough to accept the alloy the alloy rod because what happens is, now you've got to be careful with this blue flame, you can melt the model. So you just gently keep it moving at all times. Don't hold it in one spot. And you can see the flux is changing colour. It's going like a dark brown. 
Well, when it reaches dark brown, that is a signal to you that the metal is at a temperature that will melt the alloy rod. And as you can see, I touched it there and it's like, it's gone all soggy and just dropped off the end and it's formed a nice little weld. Now you have to let this cool. If you pick it up immediately afterwards, it will fall apart. But here I'm also showing you that, to my despair, the axle heated up really, really fast and melted the wheels. So I've got to replace the front wheels now. So this is basically what it looked like before I snapped it. There's a slight angle in the front there, but I'm, I'm leaving it as is. I'm not going to try and straighten it again because I don't want to give myself extra, extra work. I've just got to grind off some of this excess material, the alloy rod left behind, and then get back on track where I wanted to be in the first place before I foolishly snap this bit in half. Now it turned out good and I managed to preserve all of the lettering on the underside of the model, which was a miracle really, considering the amount of product I put down. So I, I suppose I could say to myself, well that was a good practice dummy run. Now for the bit that I really wanted to fix or needed to fix, So again, I've got to separate this part and these rivets are particularly awkward because they're recessed in the model. And that was very difficult to get that pin out without damaging the model, but I managed to get there in the end just by persevering and wearing some magnifying glasses to make sure I didn't damage the model unnecessarily. That will go back there at the end of the day, hopefully. Now I'm using these soldering helping hands from a hobby shop to hold the parts into position because you really can't do this with two hands. It's, humans should have been born with four arms, but uh, we can't do things on our own, unfortunately. So I've got to use these helping hands. And again, the flux is now going dark brown, so I'm dabbing the solder on, there we go. And once it's weeped into that groove, you're halfway there. Right, just don't move the model until it's cooled. I'm going to flip it over in a second and you'll see what I mean about how this alloy only flows where the flux is. It looks a bit messy on this side, but that's no matter. I can grind that down and clean it up. But on the other side, look at that, it's a perfect weld, perfect fillet weld or whatever you call it. I don't know, I'm no welder. But it looks really, really neat. In hindsight, I probably should have smeared a bit of body filler on there and hid, hidden that groove. But I liked it, it was pretty cool. It sort of shows that it was snapped at one stage and somebody's fixed it. And that someone was me and I'm very proud of my efforts today. I'm just using the Dremel with the grinding this there to wear away all the excess alloy and then moving on it's time to undercoat these models with the all ever favorite undercoat the Tamiya light gray right that was quite uh, stressful that little bit I think I might have a cup of coffee and unwind before the next stage of this makeover. I'll put the kettle on. Oh, we've got some biscuits here. Oh, what's this here? Oh, it's kind of uh, sort of like a fancy little biscuit here Julie's bought. That's nice. Okay. I think I'll have one sugar today. Maybe a splash of cream. Hmm. Gee, that welding was difficult. Glad I don't have to do that every model. Anyway, oh, there we go. The kettle's boiled. Nice cuppa. I'm looking forward to this biscuit. Hmm. Can I get back under it? Oh, hang on. Clear the table first. Okay, I'm now going to show you these little 
magnetic work lamps that I got from an auto spares shop. They were on special. Don't know why. They're only like three ducks, three dollars each, I think. And I've screwed a metal ruler here. I did this a long time ago in the top of my spray booth, and it just so happens that they can attach to them, which is a great thing. So let's have a look at these details on this model before I paint over them. There's front door there with two hinges and the handle. There's engine uh, inspection hatches on the side with vents and a handle on it. Now, I should have drilled this rivet out and tapped it prior to undercoating it, but I forgot. So I'll do that next. Having another look at this weld, it looks even better with the undercoat on it. Can't wait till the top coat's on. Here you can see all the lettering underneath and okay the weld at the front's not the best there's a couple of little holes in it I didn't realize before once again maybe I should have waxed some filler in there didn't notice until now there's a number plate nice detail and look at this jib or boom it's got all those little rivets on it it looks fantastic okay so I'm using this uh, very small drill I think it's two millimeters to drill out this rivet and then I'm going to when I put the model back together because I've destroyed the head of the rivet I'm going to tap the hole that I drill and then I'm going to put one of these 2m button headed hexagonal hex key screws in there to hold it back together again I've done it before it's a common thing a lot of matchboxes do it matchbox enthusiasts do it uh, I think this drills a little bit wonky here possibly got a bit of a kink in it what I do I end up drilling a pilot hole with a small hole and then go again with the wonky drill I go down pretty deep because those screws are quite long now I'm just working this tap cutter this thread cutter in and out a few times I'll give you a close-up of the screw thread so you can see what that's done to the hole let's cut a screw thread in there to accept this little screw so I screw this in and I leave it in whilst I paint the model because originally the rivet head was the same color as the model and if I left it out when I put it in it would be black it would be very noticeable on the base so that's why I do that now they didn't have any yellow paint in the hobby shop can you believe it so I had to buy this lacquer paint that nobody uses number 113 from Mr Hobby and I also had to buy this lacquer special lacquer thinners so just to paint this model was annoying because I just wanted to go in and buy my standard Tamiya paint but they didn't have any because the coronavirus has upset all the imports and exports and apparently model shops are suffering like all the other shops they're running out of supplies so I guess I was lucky just to get this lacquer paint otherwise this makeover would not have been taking place today which would have been very frustrating. So I'm just mixing in a little bit of the lacquer thinner there. I really don't know what I'm doing. It's the first time I've used it, I think. But I'm using these little snap lid pots here for mixing, putting mixed paint in these days, and it keeps it fresh for when I need it, which looks like two seconds later, but it's actually half an hour or so. But there you go. So I've got my spray brush up to pressure with my little air compressor and away we go and it, like I said this is I think this is the first time I've used the lacquer paint uh, overall it's, I'm not impressed and then I, I realized it's a semi gloss not a gloss I really should have would have liked a gloss but unfortunately like I said the yellows were in short supply they had a lemon yellow but I thought that was a little bit too light I had nothing to tint it with so I've gone with this one the one they had and it actually looks quite nice it looks like a construction type of yellow and after I painted them I whack them in my little pizza oven for 10 minutes on the minimum heat setting but it still gets up to like 80 degrees which is insane anyway it dries the paint bakes it on really quick and it means you can handle the model without leaving fingerprints on it which is great I then give it a quick coat of the Tamiya clear 
and leave it overnight to harden. Whilst all that's happening, I thought I'd have a crack at polishing this huge windscreen. It's a beautiful dark green. I've never seen a dark green windscreen in real life, only on model cars. I guess it would look rubbish at night. You wouldn't be able to see where you're going. Anyway, they look good on these models. And I'm really going to give this my best shot using this semi-chrome polish and some soft cotton buds. And I work away on this piece for over half an hour. And I didn't realize, but it's got no back window on the truck cabin, but I did it anyway. But on the top, I had to do the top as well because there is some sunroofs uh, to let light in for the driver um, in the roof of the cabin, which I have not seen in many models that I can think of, and it took me by surprise. So I did have to do the top. Even though I did the back, I didn't have to do the back, but I, I did the back and then I didn't do the top, and then I had to do the top, so that's why it took me half an hour. But this came out absolutely beautiful, but to try and get the best finish possible, I used the old trick of the self-shining floor polish, this glossy, long-life product that you normally put on floorboards or tiles, and you don't dilute it, what I do with this is I just dunk it into the product with some tweezers and then I sit it on these little pieces of tissue paper so it wicks away any excess product because you don't want sort of huge globules of it at the end of the day and I set it aside in that onion saver and the next day when you crack it open you're left with a beautifully high gloss finish plastic piece and I'll show you that in a minute. But next up, I'm going to wash these grubby tires and wheels just using some general washing up detergent and what I call my wheel rig, which is basically a block of wood with some nails hammered into it and the heads cut off. And depending what I want to do, I can put up to five wheels on here at once and give them a scrub and they don't fall off. They stay in place whilst you're scrubbing them. And you don't get your hands sore, your fingers sore by hot, gripping hold of them whilst you're scrubbing them. Then I rinse them off in some water. Notice there one of the hubs has fallen out. And towel dry them. I have a look, they, they are really 10 times better already just for that. But I go the extra yard and to make them look like brand new, fresh out the box, Using a piece of masking tape to stop them flying everywhere, I stick them down lightly on this piece of card, place them into the spray booth, and give them a quick coat of some Tamiya Clear. Now I've just got these metal parts and a few plastic parts to address. This hook strap here is bent. What I do is I go and heat it up with just hot water not boiling and I straighten it with finger pressure and whilst I'm holding it straight I ran it under the cold tap and it seemed to work quite well. For this little silver piece of the ram here I use this 2400 grit uh, emery board and I just scuff it up until it looks nice. Uh, interestingly I revealed a capital A on this item which I checked with the other model I've got of the same description and that didn't have one, so I don't know what the A means. Maybe it means the first batch, because this one's all yellow. Remember I said the second batch came out and had a red counterweight, so perhaps that's what it means, I don't know. If you know, let me know. Anyway, the original axles or pivot points here were too short to reuse. So I'm having to use some old axles that I have and cut them down to suit. And for something different, I'm using this nail punch in a rechargeable hammer drill. So it's a kind of variation on what I normally do in my shed. I'm trying to duplicate it in my hobby room here to stop me having to go outside in the cold. And my shed's normally a mess anyway, and that depresses me when I go out there. So I have to clean up to do anything before I can do anything. Well, that seems to have worked okay. It's not 
beautiful to look at, but it works. So it's something new I tried, and I don't know if I'll try it again. Time will tell, maybe I'll get better at it. So here's all the bits ready to go back together, and here's that polished up and floor polished green windscreen assembly that looks like a chunk of emerald. It's beautiful. I'm happy with that. Time to put this baby back together. I take out the screw that's now, instead of black, it's, it's yellow. I put that high gloss windscreen in. Slide the main chassis into the sub chassis and then place the base on. Make sure it all clips together. There's a tongue and groove on the front. Uh, you have to use a little bit of force to get that in because it's slightly distorted. Remember when I took it off it was distorted? Well even if, after I broke it and repaired it, it's still distorted so just gotta use what you can and do what you can. Looks not too bad though. I'm quite pleased. It's all solid and it runs free. For that jib, I just pressed it on and it was such a tight fit with the extra paint as well that it's not going anywhere. It locked into place quite well. I've touched up some scratches. There's an inevitable chips occur when you're putting something that's got multiple parts like this back together. You end up chipping it. So I always remember to save some paint for such a case. So now it's time to put these decals on and I must admit I made a huge mistake here. I dropped these into the water and waited the standard sort of 20 seconds and the decal would not separate from the backing paper. And I instantly started to moan and gripe that I'd been given faulty decals, probably printed incorrectly on the wrong side of the paper. Can happen. And I struggled with them and I soaked them three, four, five times. And this thing would not detach. And then I, I got the bag out of the bin and I noticed they weren't decals, they were stickers. So the second one I put on immediately and I was kicking myself. But the good news is that I left the, the first one to dry. And about an hour later I was able to reuse it which was great, so it wasn't damaged anyway by being immersed in water, which is good to know. So let's have a look at what we started with. Remember, it was all broken up and destroyed and had wheels and tires missing. And uh, in particular, the boom and the counterweight where it attaches to the truck was broken. Well, this is what it looks like now. And I must say, I went a little bit overboard, probably shouldn't have done, touched up a couple of little, little silver bits there, the, the door handle on the front and the hinges, and also the, the radiator cap and the handles on the rear panels there. Uh, also put a little bit of silver paint on the axle ends just to finish them off. And I must admit, I think it looks a, a absolute beautiful little model. And I'm very, very pleased. I think the happiest I am is with the, well, first off, the welding of the the counterweight onto the roof there. But another thing I'm really pleased with is how the windscreen came out. It looks absolutely mint. Probably not in these pictures, but it re in real life, I'm so pleased with myself that you can't wipe the grin off my face. So here's some photos of it up close for you to see some of the, the faults that are with it. I mean, nothing's perfect. Here's a shot of Charlie. He's on his third meal break this morning. And I don't think his foreman is very pleased. As you can see, he's in the background there frowning. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. If you have, like, share and subscribe and recommend to your friends. So until next time, thanks for watching. And this is Marty saying goodbye. So this was bent and I tried to straighten it and I f***ing snapped it. Can you believe that so now I've got to f***ing repair it.